Well, it has been almost three years since the Ebola epidemic began in West Africa. It's killed more than 11,000 people and laid bare the weaknesses of public health systems. VOA has been looking at how the region might cope if the virus starts up again. Ricky Shryok reports from a hospital in eastern Sierra Leone. Less than a third of the 400 nurses working at the Kenema Government Hospital are paid. Adam Akala says she was promised she would be put on salary after she spent 2015 working at an Ebola treatment unit, or ETU. Up to date, they have not enrolled us. I'm still not paid. I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling bad. I'm just thinking that if I lose my life during the time, so that is my, all my, my, my children are going to suffer just like that. So, so I regret it to work at the Ebola Center. And that is the concern here, that if another health emergency strikes, volunteer nurses may not answer the call again. This hospital in Kinema was the first place Ebola appeared in Sierra Leone. Some of the nurses who treated Ebola patients got hazard pay, but after the ETUs closed, many had to go back to being unpaid volunteers. Yeah, we are not denying that it may not have negative impacts. If they, we have too many volunteers, that may have to slow down the work. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people will be demotivated. They could even contribute to the other workers who have been paid to be demotivated. Dozens of healthcare workers at the Kinema Hospital got Ebola, likely while caring for patients. Forty of them died, including revered virologist Dr. Sheikh Umar Khan. The health ministry says it is working with the World Bank to give the family of each health worker who died $5,000, though no money has been dispersed yet. Uh, until now, I'm not feeling happy. At any time when I remember, I remember Dr. Khan and my colleague, you know, the tears run my eyes. It was not easy. Fatima Tassise says she got Ebola, treating a fellow nurse who had the virus. At the time, she was wearing protective gear designed for Lassa fever patients, not Ebola. But that was all the hospital had. The nurses say one improvement since the epidemic has been the training on infection prevention and control, known as IPC. It's because the IPC has made us to know that we are risking our life before Ebola. We are, even if it is not Ebola patient, but we have another disease that will affect us. Cholera, hepatitis, loss of fever, there are quite a few infectious diseases that could show up at this hospital. And the nurses say at the very least they are better prepared, though they would like to be paid. Ricky Shryock for VOA News in Kinema, Sierra Leone. Well, in Kenya, a sobering statistic, almost half of all women between the ages of 15 and 45 have experienced some kind of physical or sexual violence. But a new campaign aims to stem the tide on this gender-based uh, gender violence, rather. Now, let me revive reports from Nairobi. 35-year-old Diana Kamande listens intently to presentations on sexual and gender-based violence. A widow and a mother of two, it took three successive reconstructive surgeries and therapy for her and her children to survive years of domestic violence. For Kamande, those undergoing violence of any kind ought to speak out. When it happened to me, I asked myself, how many women go through what I've been through silently? And I said, I will not keep quiet. I just purposed in my heart when I was in the hospital. My family members didn't want me to speak about it. My mother, my father and my sisters, they were telling me to keep quiet. I'm going to ashamed the family. But I said, I'm going to break those cords and I'll speak out because I believed if I speak, I would have helped a woman or a man or a baby who is going through uh, gender-based violence somewhere. According to data from Kenya Health Demographic Survey, about 45% of women between the ages of 15 and 45 have experienced some form of physical or sexual violence. The International Humanitarian Group, Doctors Without Borders, MSF, launched the campaign Don't Excuse Abuse with the aim of putting a stop to sexual and gender-based violence. A photo exhibition on display captured the horrors of sexual and gender-based violence. Dr. Cecilia Gaki, the medical activities manager at MSF, spoke to VOA on the significance of the campaign. It increases awareness, that's to the Kenyans, what is sexual and gender-based violence. 
and it also uh, helps them to know if it happens what is to be done, what services are available, and then it also helps to create uh, linkages with the actors on what needs to be done, what is being done. A 2015 report by the National Crime and Research Center noted a 49% increase in gender violence against men. Filippo Tieno from Men for Gender Equality, now Medjen, spoke to VOA at the sidelines of the campaign launch. Otieno says that cultural aspects deter men from reporting abuse. The society expects a man to be strong. The society expects a man to be somebody who uh, can take it all. Even if you are violated, you just don't need to go shout there and tell everybody else. And therefore we are saying that men need to come out more and talk about these things because they are also survivors and victims of sexual and gender-based violence. And until the society creates a platform where they can talk, then we are going to see men still uh, dying in silence rather than coming out to talk about this so that we can we can mitigate against violence against, uh, that is meted towards men. Kenya has enacted laws and policies that seek to stop sexual and gender-based violence. The Sexual Offences Amendment Bill 2016 is before the National Assembly for debate and if passed, perpetrators will receive harsher penalties. Lenny Ruvaga for VOA News, Nairobi, Kenya. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and also check us out on voaafrica.com. Coming up, African business leaders come together and agree to deepen their relationships to improve the economies across the continent. That story after the break.